On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's on his bike to test the Swan Action Cam. I bring you this week's best tech news, and Otis gets three-dimensional with Asus's new laptop. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. When John recently got sent the new Swan Action Camera, he was keen to test it out against Otis's recent winner from the Action Cam's test on Monday Night Show, the GoPro HD Hero. So, he's hit the streets to see how it compares. Now, Otis has recently done a test on the main show of action cameras, the sort you use for skiing, snowboarding or biking, so that you can actually record the sort of things you get up to. And the winner was this rather splendid Hero HD GoPro. Excellent results. Trouble is, it costs rather a lot of money. So I was particularly interested that uh, security camera company Swan had come up with a much cheaper alternative. It costs about a quarter of the price of the GoPro and uh, it looks rather like a small torch. It's quite well made and you get lots of accessories with it. Uh, this uh, useful suction mount here with a, an arm, so you can presumably stick it onto smooth surfaces, a um, head belt where you can put the camera on the side and what I'm going to use today, a uh, handlebar grip to see how good it is. What sort of camera you get for a quarter of the price. You can get the strap up. To switch the camera on, you unscrew a cap at the back. The switch is in there along with a slot for the micro SD card. There's a two gigabyte one included. Uh, there's a lithium ion battery, which is good for about 90 minutes of filming. And you can also slip on this uh, tiny viewfinder so you can line up your shot before you set off, because obviously there's no LCD screen. Well, let's give it a test. To be honest, the pictures are a bit disappointing. They're a bit blurry, and they look as though the video has been projected onto a billowing sheet. The picture just isn't stable. You get sound with your Swan recordings, but that's also of quite a poor quality too. You can also shoot OK quality 3 megapixel stills. Colours are OK here in daylight, but when it gets dark, the colour quality goes down and the pictures get really rather noisy. I also strapped the GoPro onto my head for a ride around the block on the bike, and well, that looks much, much better. I also think the GoPro's wide angle is more useful. So the performance of the Swan might be comparable with other cameras of its price, but I think if you're at all serious about your extreme sports or any other activities, you'd be far better off saving up some extra cash and going for the GoPro. News time now and first up, one of my major disappointments with Apple's new iPad was the lack of flash support, making its web experience as limited as the iPhone and iPod Touch. But Adobe have now piped up stating that the lack of flash support on Apple devices is due to a lack of cooperation from Apple themselves. Now, this could be a backlash from Adobe after recently being called lazy programmers by Apple's CEO Steve Jobs. But Adobe's chief of technology has commented on the flashless iPad, stating that they themselves are ready to enable flash on the browser on the iPad if and when Apple chooses to make it available for its users, but that they haven't had the required cooperation from Apple to make this happen just yet. It seems to me that Apple are being rather stubborn when incorporating another company's technology into their devices, but I really believe that for the iPad to be popular with the masses, it needs to incorporate Flash to give users a full web experience. And I've got a feeling that this isn't the last heated discussion we're going to hear between the two companies. Next, retro gamers rejoice, as the news you've all been waiting for has just been announced. A Sonic 4 is coming to the PS3, 360 and the Wii, and it's going back to its 2D roots. Obviously, Sonic has been kicking around ever since his Mega Drive heyday, but recent 3D titles have failed to capture the imaginations of gamers, with most of them receiving poor reviews and hitting the bargain bin soon after release. But Sonic 4 looks set to cash in on gaming nostalgia, and forgetting its 3D checkered history continues straight after the last Sonic Mega Drive title, Sonic & Knuckles. The game will be released in episodic format, starting with Sonic 4 Episode 1, and will be made exclusive for the PS3, Wii and Xbox 360's online store, so unfortunately will not be available on disc. I personally can't wait for this, as the Sonic franchise has been struggling for far too long, and going back to the simple gameplay of simplicity and speed is only going to entice new and old gamers alike. So look out for this on your online stores this summer. So 
far, 2010 is shaping up to be the year that 3D hits the masses. So, to stay one step ahead, Otis has got his hands on Asus's brand new 3D-enabled laptop to see if it's all that it's cracked up to be. One of the buzzwords at CES earlier this year was 3D TV, so you can imagine how excited we got when this turned up in the office. It is one of the first laptops with 3D technology built into it. It's from Asus, it's the G51J3D, and there are only three of them in existence at the moment, but they are going into um, production at the end of February. Now, it's aimed more at the gamers market, as you can see from the styling here. Also, that it comes with um, a GeForce GTX 260M graphics card. So you know you're talking about the pinnacle of graphics when we're talking about that. Also comes with your uh, standard oscillating 3D specs and this dongle here which you obviously plug into your USB port and this tells these what frequency to oscillate at so you can really enjoy your 3D experience. Now it will set you back £1,700. They've crammed a lot into it but let's see what you get for that money. That's nice. Not really getting it yet, getting it there. Yeah, that's working. It's a lot of dark stuff, that's brilliant, that. Oh, that's ace. No, oh, don't like that. The 3D footage on here is, is really good, although you do have to find the sweet spot. The race and uh, the band playing worked very well. I really did get a sense that I was watching a 3D movie. The footage from Resident Evil 5 and Avatar just didn't work at all. I didn't get any sense of depth from what I was looking at. It's not exactly portable. In fact, it weighs uh, nearly a ton um, and you'd be better off maybe investing that money in a setup at home. Having said that, for £1,700 what you get crammed into a relatively modest sized laptop is very good. The Blu-ray drive on here is exceptional and after all the speculation, all the talk, 3D TV is really here and that is very exciting. That's all we've got time for this week, but remember to sign up to our Facebook and Twitter pages for the latest goss on the brand new series that you can catch Monday nights on 5 at 8. This week, Susie and Jason become cutting edge music video directors. John travels to Italy to look at the latest and best smartphones, and Otis is in Czechoslovakia, checking out what could be next winter's must-have gadget. But from Web TV, we'll see you next time.